Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here, and it looks like macOS Big Sur is shaping up to be the biggest macOS update that we've had in years. Laying the groundwork for what I believe is going to be the fundamental shift for future Mac products. For this video, I not only want to go over some of these changes and features in macOS Big Sur, but also what I think these changes might mean for the future of the entire Mac lineup. This update to macOS Big Sur is a really big change to the overall design language of macOS. So much in fact that you'll notice that this isn't macOS 10.16, it's labeled as macOS 11, signifying just how much of a change this is from the previous macOS versions. You could argue that this is the biggest interface change since macOS 10's debut with its Aqua interface. Now, this is just beta 1, and I do expect some things to change for the final release, but there's a lot to like here. And there's also some bad that I'll cover later in the video. First of all, there's a lot more transparency throughout the user interface. Especially notable is the menu bar and sidebars for Apple's native applications. The applications also have refined rounded corners in application windows. The dock is also refreshed and comes with a whole new set of redesigned icons for macOS. Now this particular change is where I think a lot of controversy starts to erupt, as many of these icon changes are currently not liked. And to be honest, I'm not sure which page I fall on. Some of these icons I like the redesign of, and others, well, let's just say I'm getting used to them. And I'm not entirely sure if this is just because this operating system is so new that I don't like the design of them. I mean, it's human behavior to be adverse to change, so I'm gonna hold off on my hot takes right now and just give myself a little bit more time to play with the user interface before I make any definitive opinions on these icons. Also, I have to give love to Apple for updating their bold new design for everyone's favorite macOS application, Chess. Apple updating the chess icon just proves just how committed they are to Mac OS. If they didn't update this chess icon, I would be seriously worried that the iPad is going to replace all of our future computing needs, but rest assured, the chess icon is safe, it is secure, and it is updated for 2020. Still, there are design decisions that I think are just placeholders for now, and I can't actually see Apple shipping some of these changes. For example, open up the system preferences and look at some of the icons. I find it hard to believe that Apple will ship this in the fall with that weird notification bell. There's also the infamous battery icon that you've probably seen floating around Twitter. I mean, uh, yeah, we're not going to touch this one. Let's just say it's pretty ugly looking. Although many of you will be happy to know that Apple has decided to bring back the battery estimator on macOS, which displays an estimate of how many hours of usage you have left with your battery life. Also, another fan favorite is back, the Mac startup sound. As I was installing the beta for Mac OS Big Sur, I was doing something else, and as the beta finished downloading and installing onto my Mac, behind me I just heard that startup chime, and I was so happy to hear it back. It is just a nostalgia thing for me when I used to use Macs back in the day, so for me, I'm really happy that startup sound is back, but if you didn't like the startup sound, you can disable it now. And in a lot of ways, the playfulness of older versions of macOS is back. Not only with these fun refreshes to the user interface and return of the startup chime, but also with revamped sounds for some of your favorite Mac functions. I really like some of the redesigned sounds that Apple is doing with macOS Big Sur. Now focusing on the apps themselves, you'll notice that the sidebars have also received visual updates and refreshes, which is also reminiscent of the sidebar that is now found on iPadOS. This might emerge as a theme, and I said on my podcast GadgetCast, which by the way you should check out, I will leave a link in the description, we went over all the WWDC announcements, so make sure you check out that podcast, but I was basically saying that we are seeing a different situation than a lot of us thought. A lot of us thought that Apple might be abandoning the Mac and moving over more towards the iPad. However, what I think is really happening here is that the iPad is getting some design decisions from the Mac and the Mac is getting some design decisions from the iPad and they're kind of meeting in the middle right now, which I'm starting to think is the right approach as I do like a lot of the visual refreshes I'm seeing, not only in Mac OS, but also 
also turning over to iPadOS as well. I'm also liking the increased functionality and productivity that Apple is continuing to add. Overall, the apps themselves do look more visually appealing to me. Again, this is borrowing a lot from the iPad's design aesthetic, which makes sense considering the redesigned messages app is based on Apple's Catalyst technology, which uses the same code base as the iPad version to bring those features over to the Mac. That means you get feature parity with the iPadOS version, like the ability to pin conversations, tag people in replies, and of course, access to memojis and message effects available on the Mac for the first time. Maps also looks nice and works great with my brief time using macOS Big Sur. I even like the addition of the look around feature, which was previously exclusive to the iOS version. More prominent updates come in the form of apps like Safari, which also get a really nice design refresh. And Safari in a way kind of looks like its own distinct web-based operating system, complete with a home screen that now includes favorites, frequently visited, Siri suggestions, and a new privacy report. This new privacy report feature lets you know how many online trackers Safari has blocked. You can of course edit what appears on this page and you can even customize the home page of Safari with your own wallpaper. Other improvements to Safari are apparently making it faster, fave icons are enabled by default, and now Safari also shows you more tabs at once. You can mouse over them now to see quick previews and Apple says they're making it even easier to use extensions on Safari and also easier to port over existing extensions on other browsers. One of my favorite new abilities is the ability to right click and get different options for closing tabs, like the ability to close all tabs to the right of your selected one. Design changes don't stop there as widgets for iOS and iPadOS also make their way over to macOS Big Sur. You can access this by clicking on the time in the top right of the menu bar. From here, you can see the new notification center where you can see a better grouping of your recent notifications as well as your new widget section. You can edit these widgets and pick between three different size classes of small, medium, or large. The widgets are helpful for displaying quick information at a glance, and I really like having the weather widget so I can quickly glance at the temperature for the day. Calendar and reminders are also super helpful to make sure that I'm on top of my scheduled events. Other big changes like Control Center look more like something that you would find on iPad rather than traditional macOS menu bar lists. This Control Center now contains quick actions for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, AirDrop, display brightness, volume adjustments, do not disturb, and keyboard brightness, and even has access to media controls. You can even quickly add items from Control Center to the Mac's menu bar by just dragging and dropping, making it super easy to make sure all of your favorite settings are just a click away. Looking at these design refreshes gives us a big hint at what the future of the Mac platform holds in store. Take, for example, Control Center. Not only does it contain all of these useful quick actions, but just look at the sizing and spacing of these controls. To me, they look a lot more touch-friendly than something you would find on macOS Catalina. I mean, the volume and brightness sliders are literally perfect sizing for dragging your finger across to make adjustments. Even controls for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth change from a simple list view to iOS-style control toggles. Spacing in the menu bar is also further apart. Just look at the spacing between the menu bar in macOS Big Sur and compare it to that of macOS Catalina. On Catalina, that would be really hard touch targets that are too close together. But on Big Sur, the spacing is good enough that it's not hard to imagine that you would be easily able to tap each item in the menu bar with just your finger. Now, obviously, I have no advanced knowledge of specific Mac hardware. However, if I was to make a prediction here, based on these user interface clues that I am seeing in Mac OS Big Sur, I would assume that Apple will probably be getting rid of the touch bar and opting to put touch screen displays into the Mac in the not too distant future. I know Apple's been pretty adamant about not adding touch screens to the Mac in the past, but now that the iPad supports trackpad and keyboard and iPhone and iPad apps are also going to be available to run on ARM-based Macs without any other coding required, it just makes sense to include touch functionality even if it's not exactly perfect. 
Speaking of ARM-based Macs, I'd never forgive myself if I didn't mention that they are real, and they are coming faster than we thought, with Apple announcing that it plans to ship the first ARM-based Apple Silicon Macs by the end of the year. And not just one Mac, but Apple plans to transition every Mac in their lineup from the thin and light MacBook Air all the way up to the expensive desktop Mac Pro, and they plan to do this in a pretty small time frame of just two years to complete this transition. What that Mac will look like, what improvements it will bring, what advanced features Apple can enable with their own Apple-based silicon powering it remains to be seen. But I remain very optimistic that these new Macs are going to not only be more power efficient, have better thermals, include new features like maybe Face ID, but also based on Apple's track record with iPhone and iPad processors, be amazing in performance as well. I know I was not certainly expecting the major redesign we got with this operating system, or that I would even be predicting touchscreen Macs coming out in the near future, but this is now the reality of Apple after its post WWDC 2020 chip transition announcement. Overall, macOS Big Sur seems to be just the start of a revamp to the Mac's operating system that brings it more in line with 2020 design aesthetics, but it's also only one half of the puzzle. And I fully believe that we will have to wait for new Mac hardware before we can fully grasp the design decisions in macOS Big Sur. But anyway, those are just some of my first impressions of macOS Big Sur. Obviously, I still have a lot to cover and we still have a long way to go before this is released to the public sometime in the fall. If you like this video, make sure you give me a like. If you want to see more from my channel, make sure you're subscribed. Also, be sure to let me know what you think of macOS Big Sur in the comments below. If you want to help the channel out in any way, make sure you check out some of the links in the description. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.